I'll tell you what, there is nothing better than gaming with a joystick on an Apple II machine. I, you know what, it's, uh, I really feel bad for folks that don't have access to a joystick or, uh, you know, maybe people that are wondering if there were uh, options where they could use some of their uh, joysticks they already own with the Apple II. In any case, there's got to be a better way. Hey everybody, welcome to Ron's Computer Videos. Today we are going to talk about um, something that uh, that I think is really kind of neat, and that are, are modern repl modern replacement joysticks uh, that or uh, joystick adapters that let you use uh, more uh, modern uh, joysticks on your uh, Apple II computers. And uh, you know, I didn't think you guys. Uh, you guys probably did not think that uh, this channel was going to turn into an unboxing video palooza. But here we are. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's from Console 5. Do you know how I knew? Because there was candy involved. See what we got right here. Hey, look, it's that cool new device I ordered. It's Byte Boosters Atari slash Super Nintendo to Apple II joystick converter. It probably has a real name. You should probably look it up on the internet. Don't take my word for it. Now mine is an early unit that has a couple bodge wires on the back. The the ones that are shipping now um, are in a little bit better shape. Um, some of these original units will have the game port on the top. Um, th I think that's the way that you can tell that it's like an original. Um, the newer ones actually have the uh, port mounted on the bottom. This uh, device allows you to play, to uh, hook up either a Atari style uh, joystick or like a Sega three button or six button controller along with a Super Nintendo style controller or an original NES controller with a Super Nintendo to NES adapter. And they make those, those are all over the place on AliExpress uh, because the, the basically the, the technology behind how the original Nintendo controller works and the Super Nintendo can work are, are identical. The device includes a uh, short jumper uh, cable so that way that you don't have to have the PCB sticking out of the back of your machine in case that the uh, uh, sort of the clearance on that is an issue for you. And also includes uh, this leaflet uh, that explains a little bit more about the operation and gives the device's full name, which is uh, a mouthful. Um, but this is uh, out of the box. It's compatible with the 2E, the 2C, the 2C Plus, and the 2GS. But I have heard that there is an adapter that is coming that will convert the DB9 connection on the uh, card itself to uh, the... Uh, dip 16 connector uh, so that way that you can attach it to like a 2 plus and, and some of those older machines but anyway that's kind of cool and, and there's some additional instructions down here for like oh like you know the Atari like you know whatever and uh, and some of the instructions for like Super Nintendo NES and the Sega 3 button now here's something not everybody knows on the back of the instructions is a secret hidden message from the creators of this device that if you expose this paper to flame, will reveal the secret message. What is that message? Don't believe everything you hear on the internet. All right, let's take a second, let's hook it up, and let's try it out. Okay, we got everything rearranged just a little bit here so you can maybe a little easierly see what's going on. Sorry, Javier. So let's go ahead and plug this in. First things first, let's try with an Atari 2600 controller. And this gives me a cool opportunity to show you something else kind of neat that I got in the mail recently. All right, it's a beautiful Atari 2600 controller, but what does this say? It's a little note from myself that says fixed. What could that mean? All right, let's go ahead and let's take a look inside this controller. Now, here's something that's kind of cool. Over at Atari Age, there was a guy that for like seven bucks a piece uh, was making these uh, controller or PCB adapters for the Atari 2600. And what this does for you is it replaces the old janky uh, Apple II, or I'm sorry, the old janky Atari uh, little board that was in here that if you've ever taken one of these apart, the early ones especially, uh, it's just hand done the PCB. It's crazy, it's neat, but it does not work so well in 2019. 
So uh, these boards, um, which again you can order like you know through the Atari Age forum, um, it's all it does is it takes all of those little dome, those little domed conductors uh, that used to be in here, replaces all those with little clicky switches. Ooh, ooh, so nice. And uh, it's very easy to hook this up because the uh, the Atari controller, all of the uh, little connections, they're all color coded, and the board has the color code. So that way that uh, basically uh, within like two or three minutes you can just install this thing and you're up and running. And it's really nice. And if you've ever played um, some of those more like twitchy kind of Atari 2600 games, you'll absolutely know the difference when you start playing with one of these. So for seven bucks, if you have the means, I highly recommend it. My magical retro technology reassembling skills have been deactivated for the moment. Let's go ahead. I've got it plugged in. The uh, Atari 2600 controller plugged into the device. Let's see if it works. Hey, here's a troubleshooting tip, tip two. If you, uh, on your older machine, if you have the uh, fire button down on your joystick when you power on, it'll do a self test. So if you're getting this when you've got your uh, controller plugged in, it means your fire button is stuck down. So you can very easily avoid that by not holding the fire button down. Let's give some load runner another shot here. I think I'm ready to go for the highest score that I've ever attained. And this very much feels like playing Load Runner on any number of like classic consoles. And uh, you know, I am not an expert at any of this 2600 gaming. Ah, see, as you can tell. But anyway, so the 2600 controller works, and I like joystick style stuff. Uh, that's that's kind of part of the appeal. So if you've already got these joysticks, this is probably kind of your ideal kind of pairing, maybe. So um, let's go ahead and let's give the Super Nintendo controller a try. Now this experience here is very much sort of like, oops, sort of like uh, what you would have with the uh, modern um, Apple II joystick uh, replacement device that I showed in a previous video. It's fun and all, it's okay, but um, honestly, the experience of this is a lot different than uh, one you might have with a um, with like a real joystick. And, and that's okay, but some people are just looking for that classic flavor. So, and right there, that's my high score, uh, 3600 on uh, Load Runner. So anyway, uh, the device is pretty neat. It does, uh, it does exactly what it states that it does. And uh, there's a couple of people that are actually making some really nice uh, 3D printing cases and are releasing the device, or I'm sorry, re releasing the um, uh, STL files out there on the Apple II Enthusiast uh, Facebook group in the file section. So definitely keep an eye out for that. So if you decide to try the device, download the instructions for free, uh, go to your local school or library and, uh, you know, print out a nice, uh, pretty little case for it. All right, well, that's everything that I have for today. Uh, I wanna thank everybody for uh, tuning in yet again, and Apple II forever.